In a much older video of mine, I did a comparison between Celtic sea salt and Himalayan pink salt. I received numerous requests to add Redmond's real salt into the comparison. So here we are. Coming up is a run through of the differences and similarities of their geographic, geologic, and methods of extraction for each salt. And of course, I'll be including a side-by-side -side comparison of their mineral profile, including their sodium content. And what about microplastics? I'll address that too. Let's get started. Redmond salt is trademarked by the company as Redmond's Real Salt. It is a rock salt sourced from a salt mine located in the small town of Redmond, Utah. It's approximately 150 miles south of Salt Lake City. The Redmond salt deposit is a remnant of an ancient inland sea. This sea existed during the Jurassic period in geologic history. The Redmond salt deposit begins about 30 feet below the Earth's surface, covered by a layer of bentonite clay, which has protected it from erosion and pollutants found in the air and water above. Redmond salt does not add to nor remove anything from their salt. For example, table salt is processed to make it both purer and finer by removing any natural minerals it may contain, such as calcium, potassium, magnesium, etc. The ionic compound sodium chloride is, of course, left intact because that's what makes salt salt. Table salt is then fortified with additives such as anti-caking agents and sometimes dextrose, which is a sugar, and potassium iodide, which is iodine in its synthetic form. Redmond's Real Salt does none of those things. Their salt is kept in its original blueprint as nature intended it to be. The company claims their salt has over 60 natural trace minerals and elements, and the final salt product that ends up in the hands of the consumers like you and me is mined and packaged by only one company, the Redmond Real Salt Company. This ensures product quality and consistency. And just for fun, tours of the Redmond Salt Mine are available to the public. I'll leave a link in the description for those of you who may be interested. Himalayan pink salt is also a rock salt. It's mined from the Salt Range Mountains just south of the Himalayas in the Punjab region of Pakistan. So technically, not the Himalayan mountain range despite the name. The salt is sourced from an ancient dried up seabed from the Idiacaran to early Cambrian period in geologic history. The Kira mine is the only authentic producer of Himalayan pink salt. There are other pink salts, but if it claims to be official Himalayan pink salt, then it comes from the Kira mine in Pakistan. This mine is the second largest salt mine in the entire world and spans 25 miles deep into the earth. Himalayan pink salt does not remove any of its mineral content the way table salt does and claims to have over 80 trace minerals and elements. Although authentic Himalayan pink salt is mined from this one location, it is then shipped off to numerous processors who label it with their own brand before it's sold to the consumer. This makes quality control more challenging. Although most brands don't insert added ingredients like anti-caking agents or potassium iodide, some do, so be sure to read the label before purchasing. If you're visiting Pakistan, the Kira Mind is open to the public and offers tours into the mine. You'll find a link in the description for more information if that's something you're interested in. Celtic sea salt, specifically light gray Celtic sea salt, gets its name from a harvesting method invented by the Celts who settled over a thousand years ago in the Brittany region of France. The salt is made with natural cultivation methods passed down over the centuries. As the tide comes in, the seawater is allowed to settle in shallow pools that have the native gray clay in them. Wind and sun will act on the seawater and create a dense and rich brine. This is where it will crystallize by natural solar evaporation into salt grains. The salt is then harvested with wooden tools in the tradition of Celtic methods. Other than the unique grayish color of the salt, its standout feature is that it has a 14 to 17 percent moisture content because of the mineral rich brine that is not stripped from the salt during harvest or processing. So when you open a bag of light gray Celtic sea salt, you will find it is indeed a moist salt. 
This unique seawater brine attributes to the excellent flavor of light gray Celtic sea salt and why it's valued by chefs and home cooks. Their website claims to test the salt for 72 elements and they get back affirmed readings of around 60 of those. The final salt product with this specific name brand is harvested and hand packaged only by the Celtic Sea Salt Company. This ensures quality control and consistency. No other additional ingredients are added to or taken from the salt. It's nature made and kept that way. Taking a holiday in France? Visit the official website Tourism in Brittany for more information on how you can tour the salt marshes that make the region famous. Next is the mineral comparison, but first know where I got the information. The Redmond's Rio Salt spectral analysis was retrieved from the official Redmond's website and values were based on a 1.4 gram serving. The Himalayan pink salt spectral analysis was retrieved from the book Water and Salt, The Essence of Life by Dr. Barbara Hendel, MD. Values were based on a one gram serving. The Celtic sea salt spectral analysis was performed by Western Analysis Incorporated for the Grain and Salt Society. Today, the Grain and Salt Society company is known as Selena Naturally, the originator of the Celtic sea salt brand. Values were based on a 1.3 gram serving. To make the comparison an even playing field, I made mathematic adjustments to the serving sizes so that each salt would reflect at the same serving size of 1.5 grams. As we are about to get started, remember these are trace elements. Salt is not supposed to be a source of daily recommended allowances. Chloride. Redmond's has 913.8 milligrams, Himalayan 885.45, Celtic 693.75. Sodium, Redmond's has 568.6 milligrams, Himalayan 575, Celtic at 530.76. Potassium, Redmond's has none detectable, Himalayan has 5.25 milligrams, Celtic at 3.11. Sulfur, Redmond's has 3 milligrams, Himalayan at 18.6, Celtic at 11.19. Calcium, Redmond's has none detectable, Himalayan has 6.07 milligrams, Celtic has 2.92. Iron, Redmond's has 0.45 milligrams, Himalayan 0.058, Celtic 0.16. Phosphorus, Redmond's has 0.045 milligrams, Himalayan 0.0001 milligrams, Celtic none detectable. Iodine, Redmond's has 0.05 milligrams, Himalayan 0.15 milligrams, Celtic none detectable. Magnesium, Redmond's has none detectable, Himalayan 0.24 milligrams, Celtic at 6. Zinc, Redmond's has 0.003 milligrams, Himalayan at 0.00357 milligrams, Celtic at 0.03. Copper, Redmond's has 0.003 milligrams, Himalayan 0.00084, Celtic at 0.02. Manganese, Redmond's has 0.003 milligrams, Himalayan 0.00405, Celtic 0.02. When testing for elements at such small levels, the results will vary even within the same shaker of salt. Therefore, all the numbers given are approximate. Covering all the minerals and elements would be too much for this video, but if you want to view the complete spectral analysis for each of these salts, Check the description below where I will leave links to the information on each of those. Here's a hot topic, microplastics. A study was performed testing 39 salts sourced from worldwide mines, sea, and lake waters. All were found to contain detectable levels of microplastics, however, at varying degrees from very low to very high. There seems to be two major pathways of exposure. One is environmental contamination. For example, sea salts, due to the plastic pollution of the oceans, typically contain measurable amounts of microplastics. However, thanks to today's latest technology and filtration capabilities, some companies claim to filter out these microplastic particles with micron filters. Does Celtic sea salt filter microplastics from their salt products? This is a screenshot from the Celtic Sea Salt Company of their official statement on the matter. I will read the section addressing the microplastics concern. We also test for things you do not want in your salt, such as lead, cadmium, mercury, arsenic, microplastics, and microorganisms. We have found over the years that the analyses are very consistent. There is evidence that even though there is risk of pollution in the oceans, the salt is not bringing the pollution into its crystals. What comes out as salt is not the same as what seawater goes in. 
The second pathway of microplastic contamination is through processing and packaging. Even though rock salts are expected to have zero microplastics since they're protected beneath the surface of the earth, they too have not been able to escape the plight of microplastics. Certain plastic components such as the tools and packaging materials are suspected to be the source of rock salt microplastic contamination. Overall, each one of these salts has its pros and its cons. Personally, I often use either Redmond's or Himalayan pink salt in my vegetable fermentations. And I'm no chef, but when I cook at home, I prefer the taste and the texture of Celtic sea salt in my non-fermented meals. At the end of the day, the only salt I truly avoid at all times is table salts with their added anti-caking agents, dextrose and or potassium iodide, because that's my personal choice. Decide for yourself which salt is best for you. No one says you're only allowed to use one type of salt. Mix it up and discover your own favorite. If you're familiar with my channel, then you know I primarily focus on fermentation recipes and education for a healthier body and lifestyle. Salt is of course a major component of fermenting and a pure salt at that since anti-caking agents can cause a fermentation to either fail or go wonky. If you're interested in making your own probiotic rich green cabbage sauerkraut with carrot and ginger, or perhaps red cabbage sauerkraut with pear, fresh fennel, and garlic? Or what about probiotic fermented pickles? And that's a fermented pickle, not a vinegar pickle. Check out my fermentation playlist right here, where you can find all my fermentation videos, including the sauerkrauts and pickles I just mentioned. I'll be seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.